From UFOs to psychic powers and government conspiracies, history is riddled with unexplained events. You can turn back now or learn the stuff they don't want you to know. Here are the facts. Facebook is enormous. As of 2012, there are more than 800 million members. Each day, millions of people log in for an average of 20 minutes to share their thoughts, locations, and more. More than 1 million websites have Facebook integration and offer the ability to use your Facebook ID on their own sites. Whether you're a Facebook fan or try to avoid it completely, there's no denying this website is a runaway success. But for whom? Its most public face is founder Mark Zuckerberg, but some conspiracy theorists believe Facebook has another master, the US government. Here's where it gets crazy. The conspiracy claim is this, that Facebook is either a front for or in cahoots with DARPA, the NSA, or the CIA, and that they use this site to obsessively monitor the online activity of Facebook members. So why do people believe the story? First, it's true that Facebook is a massive surveillance tool, but it's an opt-in, voluntary tool for advertisers. Facebook makes the bulk of its revenue by selling targeted advertising deals. Second, parts of the US government have already been caught taking dodgy steps with individual privacy. Consider that the NSA has been repeatedly criticized for amassing loads of data from cell phone companies without the knowledge or consent of cell phone users. With this in mind, it doesn't seem quite as unreasonable that a government agency might want access to Facebook data. So we have two indisputably true claims, but these two facts alone don't establish a conspiracy. There's no link. For theorists, that connection is found in the story of investors Peter Thiel and James Breyer. Both men invested when Facebook was in its infancy. Thiel, the founder of PayPal, gave Facebook $500,000 in 2004. Breyer came along in 2005. His venture capital firm invested around $12.7 million, and he personally invested $1 million. James Breyer was formerly a board member of a company called InQtel, which works to accelerate the intelligence community's access to cutting-edge technology. InQtel was originally associated with the CIA, and George Tenet, former CIA director, explains this relationship between the organizations in his book, At the Center of the Storm. In some ways, this seems like a case of guilt by association. Yet when this theory is discussed, Breyer is often trotted out as a key piece of evidence. There's no denying the information gleaned by Facebook from its users is valuable to a degree, and there's no question that the US government has been caught gathering private information without people's consent. But does that mean the government actually controls Facebook? With the evidence at hand, this seems like a bit of a leap. But here's the frightening thing. Facebook doesn't have to be controlled by the government to work with it. The US government has made increasingly frequent demands for information from ISPs, telecom companies, social media sites, and other online entities. Facebook is no different, and the information generated by Facebook users is its primary source of profit. Facebook has every motivation to increase the amount of information created, and they haven't wasted any time. From automated facial recognition to software that screens personal messages for hints about crime, Facebook has vastly expanded its ability to know everything about its users, and it's a good idea to consider every activity on Facebook public knowledge. Whether Facebook works for the government or simply sells your personal information, the questions remain. What are they doing with your data? Who's buying it? How is it being used to affect you? For now, that's the stuff they don't want you to know.